Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy, you're The Bright Side Girl, and today we're going to be doing my October reading wrap-up. Tonight, I am attending a masquerade ball, so I'm all dressed up for you Halloween style, so I thought I would come in and just go ahead and do my wrap-up. I'm doing this wrap-up just a couple of days early because I don't think I'm going to finish the books that I'm starting at the end of October before November anyway, and I wanted to try to get this video up as close to Halloween as possible. If you want to see pictures and videos of the masquerade ball, that will be in my Halloween reading week vlog, which will be up very soon if it's not up already, as well as my Instagram, so go check it out there. I'll post some pictures and videos. I've been wanting to go to this for so long, so hopefully we have a great time. So I had kind of a weird reading month. I had such a great September reading month. I got some series finished, and I really loved the spooky reads that I read for Not So scary -thon. For October, I did finish a bunch of things that I wanted to finish or that I wanted to start like in years previous. So I got some bigger books like checked off of my list, but I didn't love very many of them, and some of them were not the fall Halloween vibes. I was going for. I also had a lot of other things that were preventing me from like listening to more audiobooks like podcasts and fun TV shows and a lot of editing because I did so many reading vlogs. So we'll just talk about the books from least favorite to favorite starting now. So I did not finish any physical reads in October unfortunately, so all of these are going to be audiobooks and I will put the narrators down below. Also I have reading vlogs where I'm reading all of these books that will also be linked down below in case you're curious. Starting with my least favorite was my Montmorency. This is one that I actually hauled recently and it's part of a series. This one was like a 2.5 3 star for me. Not a bad book and I feel like a lot of people will really love it. It has some gothic Victorian vibes. It's about a thief who falls through a roof of a place he's trying to rob and basically almost dies while he's trying to escape from the police and then his broken body is reconstructed by an ambitious young doctor and he is released from prison with the help of Victorian London's extensive sewer system. So he becomes the most exclusive burglar in the city. He also has like like this alter ego that he walks around like in regular society and then he has this thief version of himself. I just really expected a lot more from this. The narrator was really really good. I love him. I always love him and it was kind of a fun read. It was very like silly, very very humorous but I don't know. I just found myself a little bit bored with it and I just wasn't in the right mood. So not my favorite. Then we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I've been wanting to read this for so long. This and Haunting of Hill House, which I will probably do next year sometime. And this one I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be like on the scarier side or not. I can't say too much because you're kind of not supposed to know what happens, but there are basically two sisters living with their uncle in this house and you know some kind of tragedy occurred and you don't know why it occurred, but the people in the town think that maybe one of the girls did it, like people had died and and there's all this mysterious stuff happening and you're kind of getting it through the perspective of the younger sister who's more young and kind of in the clouds. It's just very like eerie and a little bit creepy but it's not really scary and it's also very very sad. It has a lot to do with like grief and hardships and things. Townspeople are not very nice to the girls and so it was a little bit of a hard read, a little bit of a slow read even though it was super short. So about a three star for me. It was written super well, it was tied up really well but just not my favorite overall. Then we have Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, another one I've been wanting to read for so long. I've also been told recently that Grady Hendrix might be more up my alley because his books tend to be a little bit more campy and fun. So in this one has a very unique setting and it is set in this like knockoff Ikea. I can't remember what the Ikea is called. Orsk is the name and they basically are selling cheaper versions of Ikea but it's got kind of a similar layout and we're following some characters on a shift and then some very strange things start happening. That's all I kind of want to say. It's got a, a little bit of a haunted house vibe but in the Ikea setting. The setting is super cool and I did really enjoy the characters. The first half started out like really campy and fun. Something I really loved about this book is that in between some of the chapters there are commercials done for the different products that Orsk has to offer and they're done with a different narrator and it kind of reminded me of like Feed or Beauty Queens by Libba Bray 
so I really enjoyed that. In here there are a lot of like mixed media type images and things. That is really cool. The second half of the book turns into more of a true horror story and there's some gross creepy things that happen. It stays kind of campy and fun but it was a little bit much for me personally. I wasn't sure how dark it was gonna get and it stays pretty fun and campy. It gets to be a little bit gruesome and gross and then the ending doesn't like kind of fully tie things up. I am kind of still thinking about this so I feel like this is one I will still recommend if you really enjoy like horror books and you don't mind something a little bit on the more gruesome side but for me personally it was like a 3.5 star. Then I read A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I had been under the assumption that this was like a dark academia gothic almost ghost story kind of a vibe. And while I can see why people are saying this is dark academia, I wouldn't consider it dark academia personally because it's kind of hard to explain. We're set in this fantastical world where they have their own like lore and myths and gods and things revolve around certain areas and our main character is going to school to be an architect and she has been obsessed with this book about a fairy king that was written by a famous author and she kind of dreams about the fairy king every night and all these weird creepy things kind of happen. Then they run a competition to rebuild the author's home once he passes or to build a new home where his home was it was all a little bit confusing and she gets picked to do the task so she goes to his home and starts to uncover things about his life and the fairy king and the stories and the myths and the lore. All of that sounds great. It even had like a lot of water elements that made me think that we might get mermaids but we didn't. But this book is not set at school like she's at this manor and there's another character and they're trying to kind of unsolve some mysteries so I don't really consider this dark academia. I really liked so many things about it but it felt a little bit slow. The characters felt a little bit under developed. It had a lot to do with grief and hardship. Again, not something I always love. And I felt like things could have just been tied up a little bit better. I know some people are going to really love this, but I feel like other people will struggle with it like I did. So not a bad book, but again, like a three star. All right, then we have If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. Again, another one I really wanted to read and I finally got to it. This one is true dark academia. This one is adult. This one's about a group of college kids and they all perform Shakespeare plays. They're in this like elite school with this elite acting program. And they think very highly of themselves and they do these Shakespearean plays and then one of them gets murdered one day and one of them winds up going to jail for the murder. But so we meet up with him 10 years in the future and then he starts to recount the tales of his college years and you're trying to figure out whether he actually murdered the person or whether he was wrongly accused or what actually happened. So it's one of those stories where we're starting in the future but then we kind of go backwards in time. So this one I enjoyed than some of the other murder mysteries that I have read. While most of the characters were still pretty unlikable, they were a little bit more likable than I've read in some other books. I did feel again like this one was just too long. I wouldn't consider this a thriller. I consider it just a murder mystery and it was done really really well. This has a ton of Shakespeare in it. So if you're not into Shakespeare you might not like this. They quote Shakespeare a lot. They talk about Shakespeare. I've actually done a a lot of Shakespearean plays. I was Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. I was in Midsummer Night's Dream and all kinds of different things. I even coached acting when I was younger for different Shakespeare things. So I really love Shakespeare and I felt like there was a little too much Shakespeare in this. So take that for what you will. Again, by the time we got to the ending, I didn't really care about who murdered or not. I felt like it was kind of obvious and the very, very end was kind of cool. There was a little twist in there, but it just wasn't quite what I was wanting. I might not be a murder mystery person. I'm not sure sure I thought I was. Now I'm not sure because I'm feeling kind of iffy about all the ones I've read, even the popular ones. So again, for me personally, like a 3.5 star. If you absolutely love murder mysteries, then you'll probably adore this one. All right, for Scary Week, where I read some books that were a little bit out of my comfort zone, like Horror Store and We've Always Lived in the Castle, I read Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This is an adult horror thriller and I have never read a Riley Sager before but I found this one in my local bookstore so I thought I'd give it a shot. So in this one we have a family and their young daughter and they move into this house. While they're there these creepy weird things start happening and their daughter is saying that she's seeing people and different strange things begin to happen. So because of this the father writes this book called House of Horrors and becomes like a famous author and this kind of explodes. He considers it a non-fiction book and basically 
basically you are following the daughter when it's like 10, 15 years later and she's older. Her father has died. She has inherited this house that she thought that he got rid of and she is trying to figure out what actually happened there because she doesn't have any memory of the things that he's talking about in his book and she doesn't know if he's just straight up lying because he's basically saying there's kind of like ghosts and things there. So she goes back to this house against her mother's advice and starts to uncover all of the mysteries of the house, talks to the townspeople and all that kind of stuff. So we have like a true haunted house. This one I will say is more of a true thriller. I found this one perfectly paced, like it wasn't slow. I didn't feel like it was too long. I was really enjoying this overall. I thought that the story was told really uniquely. We've got two different narrators because we have the father while he's basically reading the book to us and going back in time and talking about what happened and then you're following the daughter as she's uncovering all of these different things. I just didn't really love the ending. It got, again, a little more gruesome than what I wanted and there was a twist in here that I just didn't really care for. I'm leaning on giving this one four stars just because I like it better than a lot of the other thrillers I've read and while it was a little more gruesome, it wasn't like crazy over the top and it didn't feel like it was just thrown in there for shock factor. So I will probably try another Riley Sager, but definitely on the spookier side. So like a 3.75. Then I read Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is my first Rebecca Ross, I think. This one, again, I thought was going to be like dark academia, set a little bit more in the fall time, maybe have a little bit more of some like darker elements. But this one is really more of just like a true fantasy. It's a little bit hard to explain. Again, we're in kind of like a fictional world where there are these gods and lore and there is a war happening that is put on because of the gods. The war is very reminiscent of World War II. They use like typewriters and different things like that. So you've got a very heavy World War II vibe even though the war is caused by the gods. So you're learning the myth and lore of the gods but you're also following these two academic rivals and I believe they both want to be journalists but I'm not sure and they are basically kind of competing with each other and they wind up writing to each other without realizing who the other one is. So we've got a little bit of a you've got mail situation and there's a sweet little romance in here. Things I loved. The characters, so lovable, so great. This romance was so, so sweet. There was very little spice, a tiny bit in there that was done really, really tastefully. I believe this is why, but I'm not entirely sure. I really, really enjoyed that part. However, I feel like the world building was a little bit lacking. I didn't fully understand what was happening with the gods and the place that they were in. And I felt like the focus was so much on the romance that we just didn't get a full clear picture. Hoping that clears up a little bit in the second book because I will read it. This has been five stars for so many people because the romance is so sweet. I also read it in the fall and it's not really a fall type book and I really love reading like certain style of books for the fall. So that may have affected my enjoyment of it just a tiny bit. It was definitely probably like a four star for me. Is one that I could see the rating going up after I kind of sit on it for a while but I was expecting it to be a five star so I was kind of surprised but I still really enjoyed it. Then I read One Dark Window by Rachel Geeling. I really wanted to read this one. I didn't know really anything about it except there was a girl that has a monster in her head and that's basically all you need to know. It does have a little bit more of those darker fantasy elements, almost a little ghosty kind of vibe. So this one is a little bit better for the fall, but again, another like darker fantasy. And this world is just so cool. So Elspeth has like this monster that's talking in her head and she meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road. Her life takes a drastic turn. Thrust into the world of shadow and deception, she joins a dangerous quest to cure a blunder from the dark magic infecting it. The highwayman just happens to be the king's nephew, captain of the most dangerous men in blunder and guilty of high treason. Together they must gather 12 providence cards, the keys to the cure, but as the stakes heighten and their undeniable attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to face her darkest secret yet. The nightmare is slowly taking over her mind and she might not be able to stop him. We have this town and the kids can get infected. When they get infected, Infected, they get infected with dark magic and they basically die or they will like banish them and Elspeth has been infected but her magic never came forth because it was this monster in her head so she's kind of hiding that she's ever been infected and they have this cool part of the world where there are these different cards that they can collect to kind of banish this from their kingdom and there's like royalty elements and event elements and it's very very cool there is a lot going on but I didn't find it hard to follow I really enjoyed the romance. There is a spicy scene in here that unlike Divine Rivals, I felt like was unnecessary. 
Again, I just don't love the spicy elements, but I also felt like because it was like so short and a little bit more detailed than it needed to be, it just felt like a little bit out of place to me, but it was fine. So this one was like a 4.5 star to me, and I'm very excited to read the second one, hopefully in November. Okay, then lastly, and my favorite read of the month was Starlings by Ashley Linsmeyer. I don't know why, but this is one that I just so wanted to get in. This is a new release, and I was getting kind of like the same feeling I had when I needed to read Belladonna, and I was correct. This one was so, so good. It was slightly different than I expected, but I enjoyed it so much. It had the spooky elements, and it was just such a fun, quick read. This one has like slight House of Hollow vibes. So in this one, Kit's father always told her that he had no family, but four months ago, his sudden death revealed the truth. Now she has a grandmother she never knew she had, Agatha Starling, and the invitation to visit her father's hometown in Rosemont. Rosemont is picture perfect. The famed eternal roses bloom all year round. Downtown is straight out of the 19th fifties and there's even a cute guy to show Kit around. The longer she's there, the stranger it all feels. The Starling family is revered, but there's something off about how the Starling women seem to be at the center of the town's important history. And as welcoming as the locals are, Kit can't shake the feeling that everyone seems to be hiding something from her. So this one is just really, really good. It was creepy, but not scary. It was fast paced. It was mysterious. I kind of could tell what was kind of going on, but I didn't fully know. Has a little bit of a fantasy element. I just really, really enjoyed it. So it was like a 4.5 star and I highly recommend. Okay, you guys, so that is everything that I listened to for October. I plan on having a somewhat chill November, but I am going to finish up some more series before we dive into some festive holiday reads, which I'm very, very excited for. Stay tuned for my November TBR, which should be out very, very soon. Let me know how your October reading month went down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Bright Side.